ABG Interpretation Case Study Ashlam Protocol How to study ABG? Four items. Number one, listen carefully to the clinical history. Number two, study the lab investigations, including the ABG chart. Number three, look at this Ashlane ABG table to fill in the spaces measured and calculated. Number four, back to this Ashlane ABG table to study BH chloride items, bicarbonate items, oxygenation state of the lung, and ventilation state of the lung. Clinical history. Study of the clinical history will be important for two things. Number one, to anticipate the pathophysiology. Number two, to anticipate the sequelae of events. Anticipation of the pathophysiology, like what? If the patient is vomiting, is going to lose chloride, gain bicarbonate to develop hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis. If the patient develops diarrhea, will lose bicarbonate, gain chloride to develop hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. If the patient uh, develops diabetic ketoacidosis, Bicarbonate will be consumed, so we will develop high anion gap metabolic acidosis. In a renal failure patient, bicarbonate will be consumed by the fixed acids to develop also high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Methyl intoxication will be associated with the formation of formic acid to consume bicarbonate to develop high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Stable congestive heart failure, the patient will have hyponatremia, maybe on the erratics like furosemide to develop hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis. Liver cirrhosis patient will have hyponatremia, hypoalbuminemia, hypokalemia, and develop metabolic alkalosis. Anticipation of the sequelae of events, like what? If the patient developed vomiting, then became shocked. Vomiting will develop hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis. Then shock will develop high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Lab investigations you will should study sodium, chloride, potassium, BUN, serum creatinine, random blood sugar, ketone bodies, and serum lactate. Then come to the ABG chart to study it. You see the values. For the calculations of the calculated items, don't forget these uh, formulas, and these equations. I collected it in the form of golden rule in these four slides. You should know it by heart. Number three, look at the Agilean table and fill the spaces. These spaces are two. Number one, the measured items will be taken from the lab investigation and the ABG chart. Then the calculated items with these red arrows, you have to calculate it before starting the Aglan Aglan ABG table. Number four, study Aglan table. This Aglan table, as I have mentioned before, is formed of uh, measured values and calculated values. To start with, number one, by the BH. Number two, the chloride items. Chloride items, serum chloride, chloride sodium ratio, corrected bicarbonate, and strong ion difference. Number three, bicarbonate items. Serum bicarbonate, an ion gap, Buffer base, strong ion gap, base excess. 
Number four, oxygenation state of the lung, FiO2, PO2, B, uh, arterial oxygen, partial pressure of oxygen of arterial oxygen, and alveolar arterial gradient. Number five, ventilation state, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and its generation to the pH and bicarbonate. To study the pH for sure, see what is, is it normal, the acidemia, or alkalemia. Start studying the chloride atoms number two. As I've mentioned before, serum chloride, chloride sodium ratio, anion gap, strong ion differences, and corrected by carbonate. From these items and from these data, you will come to the diagnosis or the start of the diagnosis. Start pathology, the first pathology. Number three, starting by carbonate items, serum bicarbonate, buffer base, base excess, strong ion gap, and anion gap. This will give you the last or the second pathology and the second diagnosis. Number four, the oxygenation state of the lung will be well decided through studying it. FiO2 and BaO2 and you will come to the formula alveolar arterial gradient to diagnose the oxygenation state. Is it normal or hypoxic? Number five, studying the ventilation state through so studying the partial pressure of carbon dioxide correlated with bicarbonate and BS. See whether the patient is hyperventilated, hyperventilated, normal ventilated, compensated, or not. Case number nine, it's an interesting case. 60 year old homeless man presented with nausea, vomiting, and poor oral intake two days prior to admission. Nausea and vomiting, but very short time. And poor intake. The patient reports a three day history of binging or binge drinking. Binge drinking, this means uh, the consumption of excessive amount of alcohol in a short period of time prior to the symptoms. So two important points, drinking high volume of alcohol, and at the same time, poor intake, which might lead to two things, either starvation ketosis or shock. What about the lab data? Sodium 132, potassium 5, chloride 1.4, BUN 25, chloride 1.3, glucose 75, pH 73, partial pressure of carbon dioxide 29, bicarbonate 16, partial pressure of oxygen 92, serum albumin 1, slow. He was on room air. Let's come and study a gland table. First, the pH. When you look at the pH, it is acidemia. Bicarbonate is 16. And uh, when you calculate the compensation of uh, carbon dioxide, it is compensated. So this is uh, metabolic acidosis with compensatory respiratory alkalosis, and the pH is uh, 7.3 acidemia. Let's come to the second item, which is chloride. Chloride here is uh, 104. It's normal. But the patient is, uh, if the patient is vomiting, this means that uh, the chloride should be low and bicarbonate should uh, be high. But the corrected bicarbonate is normal. So the vomiting uh, was nonsense. Chloride is normal. When you come to the chloride to the sodium, it is more than 74, it is 78. So the problem is sodium is low. Sure, the sodium is low. So the problem here is uh, low sodium. What about the strong ion difference? Strong ion difference is below 40, is acidotic. So the problem here is not high hypercalorimic metabolic acidosis, it is uh, hyponatremic metabolic acidosis. This is due to the fact that uh, high consumption of alcohol will be associated uh, with loss, with uh, increased urination and loss of sodium in the urine. This is number one. Number two, when you come to the bicarbonate. Bicarbonate here is 16. Slow. Metabolic acidosis. Confirmed by the buffer base is low, less than 40. Metabolic acidosis. 
and here there is a big base deficit. When you come to this uh, metabolic acidosis, uh, the patient is have an iron gap for the albumin is low. We should look for the corrected an iron gap is very high. So this patient had after that high an iron gap metabolic acidosis with fixed acids in the form of strong iron gap is high more than zero. This may be due to two things: keto acids or lactic acids. So this patient. Uh, had first hyponatremic metabolic acidosis and then high anion gap metabolic acidosis. What about the respiratory system? Alveolar pressure oxygen 111, arterial oxygen 92, alveolar arterial gradient is normal, so there is no problem for hypoxia or hypoxemia, no problem for the respiratory system, also the carbon dioxide is. Uh, good compensated. So this patient had high bonatremic metabolic acidosis plus high ananga metabolic acidosis. Thank you.